Most of the time when we think about comfort foods, we think of the foods that we had growing up. In my case, it was my grandmother's meatloaf. That's what I'm going to show you how to make today. And it's really very, very simple. But there are a few things that if you don't pay attention to, you're going to end up with something that resembles a brick. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that. It's really easy. We're going to start with the food processor. And you don't, you know, if you don't have a food processor, just chop everything together real well. So we're going to take about half of a yellow onion. I just chop it up a little bit ahead of time to give the food processor a head start. About half of a green bell pepper. What else goes in here now? A good bit of garlic. I'm going to put the lid on this and I'm going to give this just a second or two. Now, here's the thing. If there's an ingredient that you don't like, leave it out. But, in this case, these things are not just for flavor, they also help to keep the meatloaf moist when it bakes. So, if you leave it out, make sure you put something else in there that will be equivalent. Another vegetable is good. Celery is fine. You can use that in place of something. I have to say, leave the onion in. You're going to miss it if you don't. And we're going to have it so finely minced, it's going to be nearly invisible. That's two eggs. They beat up just a little bit. So you really aren't going to get big chunks of it. Okay. It's just a pinch of kosher salt. I think it might have been a quarter of a teaspoon. You need a little bit of salt, but not too much, because a couple of our other ingredients have a good bit of salt, too. I'd say that's about a tablespoon and a half of Worcestershire sauce. This is just a little bit of hot sauce. Okay, maybe it's a tablespoon. And this particular recipe makes a great big meatloaf, and I'll tell you why. I have a huge family, and so we usually need it. But if for some reason I'm just feeding the children, I will divide this in half, stick half in the freezer instead of baking it, and I've got a freebie meal for another day. Now in the South, which is where I am and where I grew up, the binder of choice was not uh, breadcrumbs, it was oatmeal. However, the texture can be a little odd if you're not used to it. So this is my trick for getting the texture so it's very fine and you end up with a very well homogenized end result. Stick it in the food processor and grind it up with everything else. It's going to get loud for a second. And what you're looking for is a paste. The reason you want to mix these things separately before you touch the actual meat itself is because the more these are mixed up, the less you're going to have to handle the meat which means you're going to have a much, much more tender meatloaf. That's the number one product people have with a meatloaf. That's about right. They overmix it, and the result is a, a lot of dense, heavy slab of... You don't want that. If you don't mix it much, and if you've got your ingredients very finely ground before they go in here, Oh, you know what? I almost forgot one. Wait, we're going to start. Let's put him back. This is my final one. This is a cup of vegetable juice. It's actually the, um, what's that? V8 juice. This is the regular. I can use spicy. Whatever you like. Like I said, some of these are for flavors. You know, salt and pepper you have to have. The oatmeal and the eggs are to help hold it all together so it doesn't crumble and fall apart. And the other things are to help add moisture. So let's mix them up. There we go. So, I like to use the great big open bowl because I can spread the meat out, drizzle things over, and kind of mix them together gently without having to get in and overwork the meat. So here we go. This is three pounds of ground meat. I have two pounds of ground round, and actually I was not very thrilled today when I went to the grocery store. I was able to find a pound of ground pork, which is in here too, and the two pounds of ground round. But what I was not happy with was that the lowest fat content I could find was 15%, which means as I bake this off, it's going to release a lot of moisture, and I'm going to show, well, fat. It's going to release a lot of fat as it renders down. So I'm going to show you most likely as we're baking, how to keep your meatloaf from being real greasy and heavy. We want the fat in there for flavor. We need some. But more than some, and you end up with a greasy mess, and you don't want that either. 
All right, you see how little I mixed that? That's all you want. You want to make sure that you've got a pretty even composition throughout. But once you've hit this stage, you're done. I've got a little bit left over, but not much. And like I said, there was a good deal, good deal more fat in this particular meat mixture than I like. Sometimes I have found it where it's much leaner and it has absorbed all of it. So you might lose a little of your, I don't know, what do you call that stuff? Your flavor sludge? You might lose a little bit of that, but it's okay. So at this point, I'm going to actually pack up half of this and put it in the freezer. Half is going to go into my dish right here. Another trick, if you happen to have a little rack that's small enough to fit in a casserole dish, you can certainly put a rack on the bottom of your casserole dish. It will hold the loaf itself above the bottom of the dish, and it will let the fat drain away. So you can do that. I don't have one, so I'm going to show you a different trick when we get to that point. Now, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And you know what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you an exact time on this. I'm going to make you get a thermometer. About, is that about half? That's about half. About an hour and 15 minutes. But what you're looking for is an internal temperature of 150 degrees. And you can use a probe thermometer on a meatloaf just like you would on a chicken or a turkey. See? That's all you do. And a lot of people go, oh, you have to have a loaf pan. And you have... No, you don't. If you want to, fine. I don't care to mess with it. That's fine. Now, I'm going to stick this one in the oven. I'm going to put this in another shape just like that. Wrap it in uh, plastic wrap and aluminum foil. Stick a label on it. And then I've got a free meal for some time in the next, yeah, I'd say, month. Don't want to let it go more than that. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. And then when I come back, I'll show you how to put the topping together that goes on top.